What's up guys? We picked up this car in Butte, Montana with the goal to fix it, sell it in 30 days and make $10,000. We did a ton to it and it looks fantastic. Check this out and let's see how we did. Okay, so to recap, when we first got the 67 Mustang, it was a cool car. It was really solid, you know, had, had ran well. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that it did need, but overall it was a solid driver of a car. Um, we did quite a bit to it. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so, well, first off, we got it at a really good price, mm -hmm. which was what well, set the whole deal in motion. We did mm -hmm. paint and body. Um, which involved a lot of sanding and a lot of prep work, high build primer, and then jet black paint uh, from Brandon. And so spent 4,000 there, I think well worth it. Turned it from kind of a dusty old car to what now looks like a, a perfect shape type of a Mustang, which was money well spent. Yeah, and that part of it was actually a little interesting because the bodywork that was there, even though it looked like it was in primer, there was a ton of cracks in the car that required a lot of extra sanding that wouldn't be on a normal car that was in primer. That right. Just required a lot of extra time. You could tell that it had been in primer for years and years yeah. and the sun had baked it and so it got real uh, cracked in it. Yep. The surface was not very smooth so it needed a lot of prep work. Yeah. We knew that going in is what it is. Um, still, that was the biz biggest expense in the project. Yeah. The other stuff that we did to it was, I'd say, very minor compared to the paint and body. Mm -hmm. We uh, put in a new dash pad. That was pretty straightforward, $150 there. We did uh, a shim in the starter. That was making some noise, $10 part there, piece of cake. Mm -hmm. We fixed the um, belt that was squealing. That was just a little bit of adjustment and some belt dressing. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, another 10 bucks there. Um, we rewired the electric fans and uh, put in that new module and mm -hmm. re rewired the switch under the dash. $50 in parts there, easy. Um, we dyed the seats. We've got a cool video on, on that, which I think turned out really well. That yeah. was only $30 cost. Right, and big significantly improved the interior. $30 and then two and a half or three hours, but yes. Yep, totally. Yeah. Um, there was a little bit of a rattle that we identified in the exhaust, fixed that with some uh, uh, crowbar persuasion. Pretty easy all in all. Yeah, so you're right. There were quite a bit of like little fixes that required time and effort in figuring it out, getting the part and actually putting it in. So yep. it's kind of more than just the cost of the parts there. I think we did pretty well. I have uh, some reservations with trying to do this more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this one seems like it didn't need a whole lot of work and we didn't add a ton of interesting value to it. So, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it was a great car. It was, it was a good car when we got it. I mm -hmm. think it's gonna be a great project for somebody now. It's certainly not done. Yeah. It, it's good, it's a great driver quality car, mm -hmm. but. Let's talk about overall numbers. Tell me what you spent overall and, and where we're at. Yeah, so to recap, we spent 11,500 to buy the car. And with all those parts and modifications, we spent another 4,250. So we're into the car, 15,750. Minus the labor that we did ourselves. So I, I think, parts, right? again, this doesn't include the labor that our painter did. Um, I think we probably spent five to 10 hours total. Mm -hmm. You think that's accurate? Uh, yeah. I didn't track so. it down with a spreadsheet, but I think yeah. probably anywhere between five and 10 hours of our time to do it. Yep. Right? I think that's fair. So, drum roll, we sold the car $24,000, okay. giving us a profit of 8250 I think that's pretty good. I think that's fair all around. I know that wasn't quite what we had in our marks. Well, let's throw back quick to the initial challenge. We said make $10,000 in 30 days. <laughs> this is like six months later. So we basically finished the project, posted it for sale, and then it snowed like two weeks later here in the Pacific Northwest. So right. we didn't get anywhere close to the 30 days. Yeah. Um, that's going to come up. That's going to happen. Those are, yeah. those are factors that are outside of, of your control. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the profit goes, I think we're pretty close to what I thought. Um, I probably could have held out and you know, maybe done a few other things, spent a dollar here to make $3 back and tried to get to that 10 K mm -hmm. margin. But after sitting on it all winter time, I was ready to get it out of the shop. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think we did, um, I think we did pretty well. Talk about your thoughts on, on how it all ended up. Because again, I know you and I have had a ton of dialogue on, you know, would we do it again? What would we have done different? And did yeah. it pan out the way we wanted it to? What are your thoughts? 
I don't know. My appetite isn't let's get into another one right now, which is crazy because yeah. we made 8200 on it, 8250. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody who's ever bought a car and sold it and again planned on doing it that way would probably agree that there's just so many things that go into it and so many variables and almost nothing always goes to plan. It took longer um, th than we wanted. We didn't want to keep it over the winter. Um, again, the fixes were relatively easy, but there was more time spent in figuring stuff out than, than what we would have wanted. Um, so I agree. And, and quite frankly, I, I like cars that we like. And so the idea of selling a car is the least exciting part of right. driving or owning or fixing even. The gratification of taking the car from what it is to what you want it to be is the fun part rather than like just trying to make a business out of it. That isn't the fun part for me either. Owning the car for a little bit was more fun. Mm -hmm. Buying it was more fun than selling it. <laughs> right. You know? Spoken like a true car hoarder. Yeah, exactly. You can clearly see. Yeah. I'm better at buying than at selling. Um, I think the takeaways are if you have to do this regularly and, or you're trying to make a profit on it, um, it's possible to make a profit on it that mm -hmm. you can, but it, you really have to know what you're getting into, mm -hmm. you know, stick to years making models of cars you're super familiar with so that you mm -hmm. can easily identify value and figure out where you can get one for under market and where you could potentially sell it for higher than yeah. where you are or where you got it. I'd rather just collect cars that I think are interesting, restore them, work on them and, and not really go down the path of, trying to flip cars for profit in 30 days. Yeah, so did we hit our numbers? No, on either accounts. But would we do it again? Also, no. I think I'm good for flips for a long time. I'd rather just buy and enjoy and restore. I think that might be the last 67 that I own, but I'm excited for the Fastback to get here pretty soon. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah.